In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hold your friends close, and your enemies even closer. You remember that, don't you? Michael Corleone, the Godfather too, but that is a proverb that goes way back. And it's something that Jesus could have said. The gospel you heard was not an ordinary gospel on love. Jesus, are you out of your mind? Love your friends, but love your enemies too. Okay, I won't be nasty to my enemies, Jesus. That's not what I said. What did you say, Jesus? I said, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Now that's going a bit too far, isn't it? We're having a hard time loving our friends, and now Jesus throws this in our face. Love your enemies. So many times we don't know who our enemies are. Sometimes we don't know who people are. Many times we don't know the person, whether they are our enemy or not. And someone we think is our friend is just about to stab us in the back. We many times don't know people. We see people as wrapping paper. Whenever I want a special gift to give to someone, I give it to Yanis, and I said, would you wrap this for me? Because I'm not very good at wrapping gifts. You get a gift from me, you probably would put it on the shelf and not open it, thinking it's not too wonderful. But she wraps it so well that you say, I hate to unwrap this gift, because I'd like to save this wrapping paper, I'd like to save this bow. But we do that with people. People come with their own wrapping paper. There are people that we see only as wrapping paper, beautiful wrapping paper on their car or their home or their nice clothes or their money. Or we see people that live in a shabby part of town. We see wrapping paper around them that indicates they are not our type. Wrapping paper. And sometimes the wrapping paper is so undistinguished, we don't even take it off. We don't want to look. We just say, this is who you are because I see how you're wrapped. Jesus said, take the wrapping paper off, because you need to know that person, and the truth is, you never will. The truth is, you never will. Oh, there's some people that that you know hate you, and that's okay. Like Sir Winston Churchill knew that Lady Astor didn't care for him. Because she would say things like, if you were my husband, I'd put arsenic in your tea. And he would say, if you're my wife, I'd drink it. And so, so you know sometimes people are your enemies, but we don't always know. And sometimes we, we make a wrong judgment. We think someone is an enemy and someone isn't. But you never really know the whole person. Sometimes you never know the pain of the other person. You don't know what the other person's been through. And the person is acting in such a way that you deem that they are against you. And really, all they're doing is hurting. And waiting for somebody to hug them. 
sometimes we misjudge because there's the part of that we never see. A few years ago, I went to New York, and my daughter and I went to the Statue of Liberty. I've seen all kinds of pictures of the Statue of Liberty. We have a big uh, painting in, the, in our uh, family room of the Statue of Liberty and the eagle. And I, I love the Statue of Liberty. I just think it's so wonderfully uh, cast. And so I thought I'd seen everything. And, and to be able just to walk there and, and look at the Statue of Liberty. And then we went inside. And I climbed up with my daughter. I climbed up the stairs all the way to the top. And incidentally, if you want to try that, try it before you get too old. <laughs> but I thought, now I've seen all of the Statue of Liberty. But I hadn't. I couldn't see all of the Statue of Liberty unless I was a seagull. Because you don't see the top. But if you see pictures that have been taken from a helicopter or over the Statue of Liberty, if you've seen down, you see this just as beautiful. But it was, it, it, it was created knowing that no one would ever see it. And there are portions of our lives that are not exposed to us and shouldn't be and have no right to be and we have no right to know because they should be our friends regardless. Jesus said, love your friends and your enemies. Keep your friends close and your Enemies even closer. You know, sometimes an enemy is worth more to you than your friend. Many times an enemy will tell you who you are. Sometimes an enemy will give you criticism that your friends would never give you. And you need that criticism to get better. To be a better person. But you'll never find it from your friends. Because your friends don't want to hurt your feelings. Your enemies don't mind. And sometimes we misjudge. We think a person's an enemy and they're a friend. We don't know. A lady went uh, between flights to, to a little shop there in the airport and bought a pack of cookies. And then sat down to eat the cookies waiting for the plane. And as she was sitting there, she heard a, a rustling there in the back. And a man's hand was taking one of the cookies. Well, to be polite, she just reached and got a, a cookie too and started eating it. But about a minute or so later... She heard the rustling again, and the man was taking the last cookie, and to make matters worse, he broke the cookie in two and shoved half of it to her. Oh, oh, was she incensed. She was mad when she got ready to get on the plane, and so she opened her purse to reach in to get the ticket, and there was her unopened pack of cookies. Sometimes we misjudge, don't we? Sometimes we jump to conclusions, this person is against me. They're not against you. You're just reading the wrong signs. Jesus said, if you love your enemies and love your friends, that's going to take care of it. Don't try to single out. But it's not going to work, is it? That wonderful saying of Jesus is not going to work because people are not going to go along with that. 
People are not going to bless those who curse them. Pray for those who abuse them. The world is going to say that doesn't make any sense. And many times we ask ourselves, does that, does that make any sense? We've got to work it out. It, was a, it, it wasn't much of a bridge. This bridge that went across the chasm was just rope, and it looked like the rope was rotten. But to get to the other side, you had to go across this swaying bridge. And it was already swaying with nobody on it. What to do? Can, can one go across a bridge like that when it looks like if you fall, you are certainly going to crash upon those cracks? You will not make it. Francisco Pizar, the adventurer, looking for treasure in Peru, had his group of people, they had to get over there. And he said to the troops, okay, now we're going to start. And they gave him that look like, no, we're not. No, we're, just, we're not going to do that. But he had to get across. The clergy was in the back. He asked the clergy to come to the front. And then he said, the church first. And the priests there with their long flowing robes started across that bridge and the others followed the truth is unless the church will grasp this truth the world never will so the big question is will the church understand the words of Jesus when he said, love your friends, but love your enemies too. Because sometimes you really don't know the difference. And hold your friends close. And hold your friends so close that you may not understand whether they're friends or enemies. But supposing they are, hold them close to. Amen.